anyone who is trying to act or be in that industry, energy is so important. Like, I've noticed as well a lot of directors talk about they look at your energy first before you even do your performance. Yeah, some of the best advice I've ever got and some of the hardest advice to take is stop acting. <laughs> Stop acting. Stop acting. Stop acting till you need to act. It's my uh, biggest fear in auditions that a lot of the time people ask you, tell me about yourself. When someone tell says, me. tell me about yourself, I'm like, well, I'm Yasmin. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> I'm Yasmin. <laughs> See, because you make making people laugh. Hello, everybody. We are in Pagoda Gardens taking some beautiful photos today, and I am here with the iconic Yasmin Monet. Oh, my well, girl. She's iconic. <laughs> You know. You're not trying. If you don't know who she <laughs> is, you better go find out. You're gonna know. Can we if just talk know. about the eyeshadow right now? I'm gonna put in effort today. Wow. It's like a sunset. Do you have anything to say to your people then? Um subscribe. <laughs> How did we meet? In case you don't know, we met doing a little show. No, that's not how we met. We met at my audition. <laughs> We weren't doing oh, yeah, the show. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, I don't know if you've seen the show, but I was already in season one. So it was doing chemistry reads, right? With the new girls that were coming in. Shout out to Gianna. Hey, baby. Yes. When Severin came in, she looked at me and she said, correct me from him. I recognize you from somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're telling this story again. <laughs> I was like, I recognize you from somewhere. Bearing in mind, she walks into the chemistry read, yeah. She says it like as if no one else is in the room. And us we just having a conversation. The director's there, the producer was there. <laughs> there were like 10 people in that I'm like, why would you know me? Because obviously, I, when I say I get around, I don't get around. But like, I mean, when I'm, at, I'm in like, when I'm in locations, isn't it? Like, mm. I get to know people. Mm. But I don't remember names, but I get to know people. <laughs> in my head, I'm thinking, oh, we must have jammed at a party or something. So then, then she was like, shout out to Lufa. She was like, do you know Lufa? And I was like, yeah, my boy Lufa. <laughs> and oh she the oh, posh, the posh voice was gone. Literally the posh voices were gone. The producers, directors, they were just staring at us like, y'all, y'all done? Like what's so that's how we first met. She did the thing. We had some improv sessions and Yana yeah, was like, Someone's the one boy. And I was like, Gianna's the one boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, these two, they knocked it out of the park with the audition. And watching that audition as well, like putting praise down, I was like, oh that's how you do an audition. Do you get what I'm saying? I had so much fun. That was such it was a stressful thing, wasn't it? Okay, my baby girl! Testing one, two, three! <laughs> it's fucking raining and I'm not fun. self-portraits of both of us because I have a shutter release cable. This is old school and I love it. Press wow. it and it comes up like that. Nice. This goes in here. This is my first time using this so we'll see if it works. <laughs> How are you babe? I'm surviving. <laughs> Do you know what it is? In general I'm good. On a day-to-day -day basis I'm trying to find different ways to in this lockdown, entertain myself. If that's meeting up with friends, do photography shit. Obviously, I'm sticking to certain rules. Mm -hmm. But like, in terms of just doing nothing, mm -hmm. I'm thinking my twenties are being wasted away. If I just literally sit down in my room every single day until we're allowed out, I'm 22 this year. Yeah, but you still got time. I got time. I'm 23 this year. We got time. I'm just mean like just living. Yeah. Instead of sitting in my room. I'm sitting up in my room. Yeah, I'm mm. Which was okay for the first one because we that's we wasn't used to it. Mm -hmm. It was a shock to the system that like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, wrapped in a cage. Mm -hmm. I was the opposite to you though. The first lockdown, I was like, how can I use this time? Oh, how can I use this time well? Absolutely. And on top of that, that post got come down. There's no joke. You know? So now I'm kind of in that state of sitting around not doing much, but things like this are keeping me occupied. You know? Exactly. Literally, little things like this, mm -hmm. or like just brighten up my mood so much. I love 
even being there if I'm not on the call. I just love being on set. <laughs> I love being in that environment, I will stand there and I'll just smile. For real. I would just like, I'm very happy here. People are like, are you okay? I am absolutely fine. Yeah. And I love being in the space where the characters are. Mm. Like, if I'm playing a character and we're filming a scene in my house, mm. I love to touch everything. I love to like imagine that I've actually lived there. Like the space is mine. Yeah, of course. Because then it makes you feel a bit more comfortable to be free about yeah. how you're gonna play it. Yes. Even when the camera's not on me, I will spend an hour, two hours, however long I have while they're setting something else up, just sitting in that space okay, yeah, yeah, and just yeah. being there. It's, it's difficult on set because when you're on set, I'm sure you've had this too, everyone checks up on you all the time. Not yeah. in the same way that they do if you're working in theatre. I hate just when I'm about to do an emotional scene and everyone comes up to check on you. I'm trying to get into my depression phase. Yeah. Like, I remember one time, season two, there was like this really intense scene there at the end, you know, when I'm doing the whole like, where the, where the fuck did you fucking yeah. the alarm? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I remember we had to do that scene after lunch. I love that scene. That was like my favorite thing we did in that show. Not my favorite, but definitely. In that <laughs> season, that was one of my favorite. Anyway, carry on. Sorry, I'm being a fan. I remember we had to, <laughs> we had to do that scene after lunch. Around that lunchtime, I just went into a corner of set, and it was like in this really nice um, mansion area really good skyline so I just went into the garden bit and I just sat there for the whole of lunch because I needed to no because I needed to stay in that angry How come mindset they because it's so hard to be authentically angry when you're not angry yeah like you can laugh you can fake laugh you can fake a cry mm -hmm. but being angry you know when someone's, someone's faking it yeah like that's some real hard emotions that come through in it so that's what I was doing to get myself in the mood and was then, there anything that was helpful for you like was it thinking about your Experiences? Was it thinking about a circumstance that you've not lived through? Like this is the fucked up side of acting. Sometimes you go deep into shit that you don't want to go into, just to relive that moment in a different way. Um, so that's what I was doing in the corner of the room. How do you keep yourself safe when you have to think about different things? Like, that? like you see it all the time where actors like literally need time to settle down after they've done such a dramatic scene because your mind doesn't know you're acting. But I've been lucky so far. Touch wood because I've been able to just switch That's good. Um, it on and off That's because good. I know that it's not real. I, I can find instances where I've been angry, but it doesn't mean I'm insecure about that situation. Yeah, it's not it's not affecting exactly. you personally. Whereas if there was a part that I had to play one day and it was an insecurity of mine and I had to tap into that that I haven't been able to solve, mm -hmm. I don't know how I would react differently. Mm -hmm. I might not be able to just switch off. Like, that happened to me actually. Like I was in an acting class. I was reading the text and when I was getting up and doing it, I noticed I was feeling really emotional. Mm -hmm. Now normally I'm like you. I'm able to know the difference between I'm working mm -hmm. and I am not working. On this day, I was fighting <laughs> tears in the middle, like in between scenes. And that's how you know that I was, I found the subject matter difficult. I'm, I'm safe, like I'm fine, because I have a safe space for me at home and also in my therapy sessions where I can deal with whatever it is that was making me feel stressed and then work with a professional to realize, okay, I'm able to then be kind to myself because I realized I wasn't working. Yeah. I was actually trying to fight off whatever anxiety was coming up or whatever the fuck. So I'm good. People need to be kinder to actors, I feel, because People it's, need to be kind of to actors. Kind of to they really treat us like babies. No, they do treat us like babies. <laughs> I'm thinking kind of. They, they bring do my treat us like babies. They bring my dreams. No, people do <laughs> treat us really, really well. Like, you mean I can't come to a more understanding when yes, we're in a scene? of the work that we have to do to get us to a space. Because people are like, it's work, it's work. Like, just don't bring yourself, you know, separate yourself, it's just work. I'm like, but it's, of course actors are going to bring themselves yeah. to a role. But you just have to know to do it safely if you're going to put yourself in a vulnerable position. Yeah. Just have things in place for you to, to look after yourself properly. Yeah. Do the things that make you happy to come down from that because that, otherwise you can be in trouble. Like this What's the most fun <laughs> scene you've ever done? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wouldn't say it was fun. The most open scene I've done was in Unsaid Stories on IT with Nicholas Pinnock. It was like the second to last scene mm -hmm. to come to an understanding. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, Nicholas, but <laughs> in that scene, like, I really felt a connection. Mm -hmm. As father and daughter, I really felt um, vulnerable so in the good. space. The fact that we met for the first time two days prior and that was able to connect in that way. Mm -hmm. 
is powerful and that's what I love about acting you can meet someone the same day but if and you're both on job you're both, if on, you're job. both on job you can end up connecting in a different way yeah. because you're both bringing yourself to the space the hug wasn't even scripted you know really yeah because we were just like let's just hug each other because that's what was needed in the moment that was one of my favourite things that I've ever done so far in my career it was so good a lot of backlash for it though unsurprisingly of course because I'm not going to lie one of the first groups to bring out something around the time of the Black Lives Matter movie yeah. that was saying a statement to TV. Mm-hmm. But now if you bring something out, okay, people will be like, oh okay, like it's people, not it might still get backlash. It might still get backlash, but it's not like people oh get you're forcing this on us. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. it was literally like, okay, this is an information program. Because there's so much more out now. Mm-hmm. So many more documentaries, mm-hmm. especially about our history as well. Mm-hmm. So but back then it was like this my point was us doing a show centered around Black Lives Matter. We didn't even need to do a show centered around Black Lives Matter to get backlash. Being black ourselves, we get backlash. Is enough. Being in the space, we get backlash. And we don't even do nothing. <laughs> we just here. <laughs> I'm just trying to do my job. Yeah, you know? I'm saying. It sucks that we're the ones who have to, who have to bring it up. Mm. At the same time, if we don't, who will? Mm. At the same time, it's not our job to teach white people about racism. Mm-hmm. So, if everyone could just do better, That'd be wonderful, wouldn't it? <laughs> Here's a cheesy question that a lot of people ask in interviews, but I want to know your answer. What advice would you give to your younger self? 16-year-old Yasmin, what does she need to hear? Be more confident in who you are and what you can bring to the table. Mm-hmm. That's what. That's the advice I would give. Because I'm happy that I found it at an early stage. If I even found it early on, who knows what I'll be right now. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Can't Believe in your souls. And that's with anything. It isn't even about acting. It's literally just about anything. You have to know that you are divinely made. You are the shit. The world yeah. is literally ending. And if there's ever a time to believe in yourself, it's now. Yeah, I'm saying. <laughs> what about you? What would you say to your son? You'd be on the sun? Stop trying to impress other people. Impress yourself. Is that yeah. impressing other people in terms of like to the search stuff for validation? Oh, okay. Like to search for validation, trying to be friends with everyone. If you don't even like everyone, why the fuck are you trying to impress them for? Gee! It specifically to myself, being mixed. You do not have to prove your ethnicity to anyone, your culture to anyone. You don't have to prove your heritage to anyone. Do you be friends with who you want to be with? You are absolutely enough of however many ethnicities you're made up. Mm. That's also what I say to myself. You think being mixed is a challenge every day with being new people? How they react with hard Now, not so much. I don't worry about it because I know myself more now. So I know that if anyone gives me shit or tries to tell me that I'm not enough of either, I can be like, fuck you, I know who I am, you know? Sometimes I do get people who will say things to me that they wouldn't say to somebody who is not mixed or somebody who's dark because they think it's okay. Mm. They think it's safe to say this around her. She's not, because she's not really black. This is what people are, you know? Like, <laughs> this is what some people have like said to me. Remember what I said? Don't you think? Go ahead. Go ahead. Bang, bang, chicken. What's the name of your YouTube channel? I want to subscribe. This is your kids, isn't it? Huh? I feel like the topic that you were just talking about now would be mixed race. To yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, mm-hmm. I'm a camera is beautiful, you're beautiful, but I feel like you guys don't look the same. Really? Because everyone says that. Everyone I tells me like I look <laughs> like her. I mean, I want to play her one day. <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> I would love to play her one day. <laughs> I generally feel like sometimes people do the whole like, People do that with black people too though. No, it's true. No, but you're right, you're right. What do you want to achieve at the end of the year? Okay, so physically, I want to see like consistent yoga practice and get better at piano as well. Within myself, I really want to get to a place where I'm comfortable asserting my boundaries. Okay. Like asserting boundaries is something that's very new for me. Okay. And I'm learning how to do that every day and I love that because it's healthy. But yeah, asserting boundaries and like feeling really good with that is something that I want to achieve this year. And in terms of my YouTube, I want to get monetized on YouTube. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Three's a good number. Though. Yeah. Three's how about you? Number. I want to feel like the most confident person on the planet. I never question myself. Going into adulthood, mm-hmm. do you get what I mean? Because mm-hmm. questioning myself is just like, it's just horrible to like have those feelings. Yeah. I hate it when people ask actors, what's your dream role? There's many things I want to do. Don't come for me. Don't put me in a box. Don't put me in a box. But what is a role that you would love to do? I would love to do a dramatic drama series like 13 Reasons Why. Ooh. Yeah, where you really tap into some deep shit. Yes. Really challenge yourself as an actor emotionally. 
But yeah, doing a story that I really care about. But that's, a, that's a good role that I would love to do. I want that for you. What I'm currently working towards, mm -hmm. playing a character with layers and depth and meaning. Mm. I want to play a character. I should have added that. <laughs> you, you said layers it though. And layers and depth and meaning. Okay, yeah, a character yeah. who looks like she's got it together. And she has so much shit going on. And has so much shit going on. Where you're able to just play. Working with a writer who has really gifted me as an actor with so much to get my teeth into. Mm. I want to see a script where it's like just a Christmas present. <laughs> I do this anyway, like I scribble all over my scripts, but I want a part where I can show up on day one and my script is like filthy because I've broken it down so much, you know? Yes. <laughs> you don't have to play a lead to have fun, but I really want to play a lead that has got so much going on. A lead. Well, ma'am. We got this. We got this. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. The universe gonna bless In us. Jesus' name. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Um, I want that for us. Keep an eye out for this baby girl because she is an absolute superstar. Bye I can't guys. wait. Bye! <laughs> <laughs> I have tried to take this picture six fucking times. <laughs> camera crew, can I get 50 mil please, camera crew? Fuck's sake. So basically, <laughs> I found out she a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> I just did my research. No, that's your part. So, <laughs> basically. <laughs> <laughs>